Hello! I thought today I would share with you a summary and the key points of one of my favorite books of all time. It is called Undo It, How Simple Lifestyle Changes Can Reverse Most Chronic Diseases, and it's by Dr. Dean Ornish and Anne Ornish. And it has been so helpful for me in my own health recovery journey. It's really a, a wealth of information. It's also packed full of practical advice and strategies that you can implement into your life that, and start seeing changes from pretty quickly. It's showing and backing up and proving how lifestyle medicine can have a dramatic impact on reversing or undoing a chronic illness and even to reverse aging at the cellular level, which is really exciting to me. I'm trying not to age. <laughs> it's not working. So if this is your first video of mine, I had my own about 10 year journey with chronic fatigue syndrome or the ME CFS umbrella spectrum that we refer to it as. And for me, it was 100% lifestyle medicine things that ended up getting me back to full health. After you know years of trying so many things and spending tens of thousands of dollars, it's impossible to exaggerate how many supplements I've taken and different medications and different treatments and all these different things. And none of it really seemed to get me very far. It might've helped a bit, but in the end, what got me to the finish line was a whole bunch of things that fall under the heading of lifestyle medicine. So probably why I'm so passionate about this book and why I'm so excited to share the information with you. And as always, this is just me. I don't claim to know what's best for anybody else. I This worked well for my body and what I had going on. So it was a really helpful strategy for getting well, but I don't know if it'll be hel helpful for you or anybody else out there. Talk to your doctor, uh, of course, decide for yourself. But I guess apparently it's not I mean, just me. The research shows that there are tons and tons of people who, by using lifestyle medicine strategies, are getting their health back. And even Medicare and some health insurance companies are actually covering Dr. Dean's program because it's been so effective, which is, which says a lot. And the great news really with all of this is that our bodies have the ability to start healing at, at remarkably and at a much faster rate than we once believed. So I'm going to outline for you the four main areas that Dr. Dean and Anne advocate addressing in your life to get your health back. But just before I jump into those four things, I just want to go over quickly a couple of sort of high level things that they talk about to help us understand why this stuff is so powerful. And one of those is our genes. And I think a lot of us, doctors included, according to Dr. Dean, have not appreciated until recently how much our lifestyle actually impacts our gene expression. He even says in this book that when he was in medical school, they were taught that the only way you could change your genes was by changing your parents, which essentially means you know, it's impossible. You can't change your genes. But now what we're coming to understand is that the way we behave, the way our lifestyle is, impacts the expression of our genes, which is such great news, especially for people like me, because I come from generations of health problems. And my mother had chronic fatigue syndrome for decades, was really, really sick. And her mother also had what we suspect was chronic fatigue syndrome. And then when I did get sick, that impacted my feelings about, am I gonna be able to get myself past this? And my mother was never able to get herself past this. And thinking that it was genetic made me feel very powerless in all of this. So when I started reading books like this and understanding that genes are not set, that our destiny is not set, and that actually the most problematic things that we probably inherit from our parents is just their bad habits, it just was really exciting for me that I had hope and I had control and I could change things. And another thing that Dr. Dean talks about in this book that shows evidence or it's a, you know, an objective way that we can measure how lifestyle changes are impacting our physiology is by looking at our telomeres. And I didn't know what telomeres were until recently. And honestly, I still don't really understand what they are. Telomere. It almost sounds like some kind of weird selfie mode on your camera. I looked it up when I was planning to do this video and I was putting together the outline and Wikipedia says that a telomere is a region of repetitive nucleotide sequences associated with specialized proteins at the ends of linear chromosomes. Although there are different architectures, telomeres in a broad sense are a widespread genetic feature most commonly found in eukaryotes. So I'm probably not saying most of those words right and that explanation probably did nothing for you. As I understand it, the biggest thing I take away from all of it is that 
Telomeres can be different lengths. They can be shorter or longer, and we want them to be long. When they are long, it's associated with longer life and better health and all that good stuff. And when they're shortening, it's a sign of the opposite of illness and shorter life expectancy and so forth. And the reason shorter telomeres are associated with shorter life is because they are associated with a whole host of illnesses and diseases, things like uh, heart disease, prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, Alzheimer's disease, type 2 diabetes, and many others. And Dr. Dean and Anne do a ton of research with their lifestyle medicine program and studies with large groups of people to see and measure its effectiveness. And they have found that after only three months on this lifestyle medicine program, the people have a 30% increase in the enzyme responsible for lengthening telomeres. So undo it program, longer telomeres. Good stuff. So there's a ton of sciencey stuff in here to help you overcome any skepticism that you might have about the effectiveness of these types of strategies. And as they point out, Dean and Anne, in this book, that one of the biggest obstacles to recovery for many people is just the buy-in, the belief that these sorts of things can have this kind of a dramatic impact on your health. So the book overall explains what lifestyle medicine is, the research that shows that it works, and then how you can implement it into your life. And I am going to go through right now the four areas that they advocate you target and the things that you should do to help yourself recover from chronic illness and disease. And the first component of this health recovery system is what they call eat well. And they have a specific diet that they advocate, and it is a whole foods plant-based diet. Now, I know some of you want to turn off the video right now. Just stay with me. <laughs> I know this is a big change to make. Not everyone buys into it. Not everyone wants to make this change. And I get it. I've been there. But the evidence, at least according to the research in this book, is pretty clear that there is a growing consensus that a whole food plant-based diet, or at least a predominantly whole foods plant-based diet, can have dramatic uh, positive impacts on health. So in my own health recovery journey, I had been reading about this and hearing about this, and I just, I knew I had to give it a shot. I was desperate to get well, and I couldn't write something off just because it sounded too hard or too unpleasant. So I did it. I made the change, and it ended up being much easier than I thought it would be. And I stuck with 100% plant-based for a few months, and then I switched to about 95% whole food plant-based, and I did that for... I don't know, a couple years. And now I'm somewhere probably around 85, 90% plant-based. So overall, I found it to be super helpful with my own health. I, it's impossible, I think, for me to exaggerate all the health benefits I saw after making this switch. And the only reason I haven't stuck with it 100% is, well, it's a couple of reasons. One, I grew up eating meat and I kind of like it. So I want to be able to have some of these dishes that I've enjoyed most of my life every once in a while. And another reason is that I find trying to live life with an overly strict approach to diet causes a lot of stress and that's not good either. You just, you have to be real realistic and things have to be feasible and uh, doable and maintainable. And then the third reason was just when I went back to work, I just don't have a lot of time to cook. So we get a meal delivery service during the week and it's been really challenging to find a plant-based one that I like. Anyways, so that's been my journey. And I know there's lots of concern from people and I was the same that you're not going to get enough protein. And in the beginning, it felt very scary for me. I'm like, oh, how, am I getting enough protein? How is this enough protein? Am I going to be okay? Am I just going to be like walking and fall over one day from my protein deficiency? But in this book and many other books, you know, like Dr. Dean goes through some research showing that it's really, really hard to not get enough protein from a plant-based diet. And in fact, people are eating way too much meat, it turns out, which is causing a lot of damage in our bodies as well. Another thing he talks about in terms of this first component of his health recovery system, eat well, is thinking about our microbiome and our gut. So that you know, symbiotic community of you know, bacteria and fungi and whatever else is in there. I won't pretend to be an expert, but Eating a whole food plant-based diet really helps support healthy gut health. So that's another reason to consider giving this way of eating a try. And a single course of antibiotics, according to Dr. Dean in this book, can take up to a year to recover from because it wipes out everything. It's like setting off a bomb in there that just kills absolutely everything. So yes, it kills the problematic stuff, but it also kills all the good stuff as well. And I've taken so many antibiotics in my life. When I was first diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, 
not too long after, I was also diagnosed maybe a year later with chronic Lyme disease and I was on two months of heavy doses of antibiotics. I'm not even sure I ever even had Lyme disease, so it's unfortunate that I took all those antibiotics, but perhaps I did, and perhaps it helped. I mean, sometimes antibiotics obviously are helpful, we need them. And then I also lived in Southeast Asia for like, almost 10 years. And in my experience, in the countries I was in, it was common practice to prescribe antibiotics for, it felt like just about everything. And in the beginning, it took me a while to catch on to this. So, and I was worried, you know, I was quite often in very poor regions and I, you know, things of like, am I getting infections? And if the doctor tells me I need antibiotics, I'm going to take them. So I took antibiotics quite a few times in my first few years in Southeast Asia as well. But even by avoiding antibiotics, in the US, 80% of the antibiotics that are distributed are to livestock. So even if we are not ingesting them, part of our health is not just what we eat, it's what, what we eat eats. And if they're pumped full of antibiotics, that's not good for us either. So that's the first thing, eat well. And then the second component of Dr. Dean and Anne's health recovery system is move more. And again, stay with me because I know my topic that I cover on this channel is chronic fatigue syndrome or MECFS, you know, spectrum recovery. And movement and exercise inherently is hard for us and can be toxic and set us back and make us really sick. But the movement he's talking about in here is gentle movement for the most part, you know, walking, stretching, that sorts of things. And he's not talking about it in a traditional way like we think of exercise, like you need to go to the gym every day to be healthy. That's not at all what their program advocates. It's just incorporating movement into your day because your body needs to keep things moving in order to be healthy and in order to heal and recover from illness. For example, one kind of alarming stat in this book is that women who sit more than six hours per day, I don't know about men, the study was on women, even if they exercise regularly, so even if they're hitting the gym every day, if they're sitting more than six hours per day, they're almost 40% more likely to die prematurely. And even just when I was doing the outline for this write-up, and I know this, but sometimes I forget, I got up and started doing some jumping jacks and some movements. I'm like, ah, oh, I sit six hours every day easily. But I do have a system for this, and I've done a video about this. I can link it above if you want to check it out to incorporate more movement into my day. So it's very simple. It's essentially, I just have two glasses on my counter. One has 10 marbles in it. The other one's empty. That's how I start my morning. And then as the day goes on, every time I do a little bit of movement, I move one of the marbles over and a move movement can just be just really any, anything simple. It can be 30 seconds of movement. It can be some stretching. It can be anything. It's just to make sure I'm spacing out movement throughout my day and not sitting on my butt with my laptop for five hours straight and not moving. And some of the reasons that Dr. Dean explains why movement is important is things like our lymphatic system, which I've talked about a lot in lots of videos. It's you know, essentially, as I understand it, our body's sort of garbage removal system and we have more lymph fluid in our body than we do blood, but blood has a pump to keep it moving, but lymph does not. So we need to do things, things need to happen for that lymph fluid to move. It's a vital part of our immune system. So keeping moving throughout the day is a big way to support your immune system and your body's own ability to heal. And one of the things that I learned in this book about the lymphatic system that I didn't know, because I know of different ways to get lymph moving, things like dry skin brushing, hot and cold showers, you know, stretching, exercise, uh, rebounding, but also deep breathing. I, I don't remember all the details of how it happens, but it, it somehow is helping to support your lymphatic system and keep things moving. So even if you're not able to get up and move around, you know, 10 times a day or however many times a day, if you're able to do some deep breathing sessions, that's going to help your body as well, which is great news for people with MECFS when movement is challenging, to put it mildly. And the third component of their health recovery system that they advocate is stress less. And I'm starting to feel like I'm on repeat in some of these videos because it doesn't seem to matter anymore what research I'm sharing. There's a lot of similarities and overlap. And I guess that's a really good thing because it means more and more people are starting to agree, at least on some things. And a big one that I'm seeing a lot of, it seems like we're all seeing a lot of, is starting to fully understand the impact of stress on our health and our ability to heal. I think we've known for a long time that stress is bad, but have we really understood why? 
And have we really understood what to do about it and how to turn that around? So, you know, understanding the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. Our parasympathetic nervous system has to be engaged in order for us to heal because when our sympathetic nervous system is engaged, which is what is engaged when we are stressed, then all healing mechanisms shut down because our body diverts its energy and its resources elsewhere. So the book advocates things like meditation and yoga and different you know, gentle daily things to keep your stress levels down. And I did a video a while back about strategies for managing stress on a moment by moment basis throughout the day, because just like exercise, how we have to change our mindset from I have my one exercise session every day and then I'm good. Stress management, I think a lot of us have had that same approach. Like I have my one yoga session for the day or my one meditation session and then I'm done. But stress management has to be something that we're incorporating throughout our day. So I'll link it here if you wanna check it out. I dive in a lot more about the role of the autonomic nervous system as I understand it and some strategies that I've developed for managing my stress levels throughout the day, some concrete tips on how to keep yourself in a relaxed state so that your body can heal and do what it needs to do. And the fourth component in this health recovery program that's laid out in this book is love more. And this is one that I hear less about some, but not as much as the others. And I, I think we take for granted, or at least I did take for granted how much things like loneliness impact our health. It's another one that has been compared to being as toxic for us as smoking. So finding love, having love and support in your life, surrounding yourself with, with good people and those strong connections is really important for our health recovery. And I think when we're putting together a health recovery program for ourselves from serious illness, it's not always something that's on the list of things that you're tackling. You might be looking at, you might be looking at exercise, you might be looking at food, you might be looking at medication, even, you know, stress stuff, meditation, that, those sorts of things. But how often does that plan have laid out to address that component of having love and support in your life? So Dr. Dean and Anne share that people who feel lonely, depressed, and isolated are three to 10 times more likely to get sick and die prematurely for virtually all causes when compared to those who have strong feelings of love, connection, and community. And I know this can be challenging when you're facing health challenges and you're stuck at home and it's hard to connect with people. And if we're in a time of a pandemic and we're doing you know, physical distancing, this all creates a lot of barriers to connection building. But I mean, we just do what we can. And for anyone who's interested, who's not already a part, I have a Facebook group that I actually put together for people who are recovering from ME CFS. So I'll link it in the video description if you're interested in joining. And people tell me so far that what they really like about this group is that we have a really strong focus on positivity and recovery. So we don't always have to be happy in this group, of course, we're dealing with tough things, but everything we post, everything we share needs to be supportive. It needs to be recovery focused. And if we're sharing struggles, it has to be you know, for a reason. Like I'm facing this really tough symptom. Has anyone else faced this? How do you manage it? So yes, find support, love and support, according to Dr. Dean and Anne, in whatever way you can, and it's going to help you with your health recovery journey. So pretty much overall, I have nothing but good things to say about this book. And if any of this sounded intriguing to you, I would highly recommend checking it out. I believe there is an audiobook available as well, if reading is difficult for you. The only thing that I wasn't so sure about in this book in relation to ME-CFS recovery is that they advocate uh, sort of an all-in approach, making drastic changes sort of all at once, which I know can be challenging with ME-CFS. And the argument that they make is that going half in kind of gets you the worst of both worlds. Because when you just make some small changes, you're not going to see a lot of improvement really fast. But you're also going to have to give up some things that you probably really like. So you're giving things up, you're not seeing much improvement, and it's really hard to stick to it. So if you can somehow get yourself to make some dramatic changes, you'll start seeing some more dramatic improvements right away, and then it's easier to stick with it. But whether you do it all at once or gradually, I think as long as you eventually over time make all the changes you need to make and you have the patience to wait it out, you're going to get where you need to go. And that's it for this week. Sending love and support to you for whatever you're facing. Hang in there, keep going, keep working, and I believe you'll get there. Take care. Sirens. Sirens.
sirens. In fact, apparently even Medicare and different health insurance companies. Yeah, no, that was right. You had it right. The great news is, I mean, the great news in all of it. You're being a perfectionist, stop it. How's my hair? Now we've got construction. Beep, 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 beep. And the great news with all of this really is that, what is the great news? <laughs> so just think, as your telomeres get shorter, your life tends to get shorter. Ooh, that was morbid, yikes. Maybe say that with a more serious face. As your telomeres get shorter. <laughs> so as your telomeres get shorter, so does your life. That's a morbid thought. So we want them to be sirens. I need to move. More sirens. <sighs> Was intriguing to you at all or seem to resonate? These sirens, these sirens are killing me. They're killing me.